If you find our video helpful, consider subscribing or sharing with your friends. And a click of the like button is always appreciated. We're always happy to receive questions from our viewers through the YouTube comments. And recently, we received an inquiry from a tea company asking about uh, what kind of control chart they ought to use and how they should make the calculations. In doing that, they supplied us with the mean and standard deviation of several subgroups of 30 items. So I think mentally they're maybe headed toward the X bar and S or X bar and R route. So the first thing that we have to understand when we're going to do one of those charts is that the subgroups we look at have to be what we call rational. And a rational subgroup is simply a subgroup that was made under essentially identical circumstances. For example, the same operator, the same batch of tea, the same machine, the same setup, and at the same time. Uh, tea packets made on different machines, of course, or by different operators are not going to be a rational subgroup. Now, the next question that you might ask is, how large should the subgroups be? And there is not a hard and fast rule. Uh, the one thing I would point out is they supplied us with means and standard deviations of several subgroups of 30, and it's very, very hard to maintain subgroup rationality with groups as large as 30. Traditionally, we use subgroups somewhere in the neighborhood of two to seven items, and five is probably the most popular. It works very well. And if we're going to have subgroups that small, then we're headed toward X bar and R rather than X bar and S. Let's look at some made up data and see how we might proceed. Note that I have selected X bar and R and have checked the four tests I commonly use. I've selected subgroups of five, which means that the first five data are one subgroup, the next five are another subgroup, and so on. Each point in the upper chart is the mean of a subgroup. Each point on the lower chart is the range of that subgroup. If we had rule violations, we would see little red numbers by the means or by the ranges, indicating which rule had been broken. But we have 100 data and no rule violations, so it's fair to say that as far as we can tell, our T packaging process is stable and predictable. That's what an X bar and R chart does. Detect instability in the process. If the question were regarding boxes containing packets of tea, then we might resort to weighing the contents of the box and using the simpler individuals and moving range type chart. There is another question that's related that we can ask and answer, and that is, are we putting too much or too little tea in each box or in each packet? And there is a method for controlling that, and that's one of the topics we take up in our advanced courses. Thanks for watching.